Hey everyone, welcome back to Build Tune Race. This is James and I am getting ready to start the burnout truck for the first time. Just a few small things I need to do to get ready to fire this thing, like hook up the battery, test the fuel pump. I'm actually gonna get some fuel put in the tank and then I need to get oil put in the engine, water in the radiator before I go ahead and fire it. So I am gonna go ahead and get some E put in here. I wanna run the truck on methanol. I'm not sure if the O2 sensor is gonna allow that. But I do have a whole drum of E, well not a whole drum, but there's some E in that drum. I'm going to go ahead and take some of that, put it in here, unhook this line, run it into a little canister, uh, just cycle it. I'm not sure on the Holly if the first time you hit power to it, if it's going to cycle the pump or not, or if you need to put a base tune in it and then cycle it. But just in case, I'm going to get everything ready so whenever we hit the key and it goes to power everything, I'm going to run around and verify that all my fittings are tight as well before we give it fuel. Oh, and I'm going to need to put something right there uh, to check fuel pressure so I can probably steal a gauge off of there if needed. Uh, and then I'll probably eventually end up putting a 100 PSI sensor since it's already wired for it and everything in here I could also get up there and steal the 100 PSI sensor off the Camaro right now So I'll figure that out. I'll do something so I can check fuel pressure before we get started But I need to go ahead and at least even plug this so I can cycle fuel through it and just clean out the lines And then we are super close still got to come up with a little uh, makeshift overflow tank for the radiator so when I put water in it and also plumb this over here I do have some vacuum line that I can run for the water uh, to come over and then maybe just come up with a little makeshift catch can eventually I'm going to put in a motion uh, probably coolant and breather once I do some different valve covers or something on this once all that checks out I'm going to go grab my little engine primer if you guys have seen it before I posted I think in another video you hook it up to the engine air pressure and then you can just turn it over and it'll fill the engine with oil and run it through everything since there is a new cam new lifters and everything in there i want to go ahead and prime it correctly and then put some transmission fluid in it and then we are super close water and hopefully this thing fires up and runs good for us a good sign so we've got some e from salty over here gonna throw it in this tank and then i'll end up putting a little catch here i'm gonna see if i have an empty one of these laying around i can kind of set it here and let this feed into that but fill this up with i don't know maybe two gallons or so just enough to cycle through the system so you guys can see that i got i don't know maybe two and a half gallons i just want to make sure that the filter on the pump down in there is completely submerged you never want these pumps to suck in air so i think that'll be good if i push out about a gallon maybe to clean the lines and put the return back on it fill it up with some more fuel and then this part will be good the power wire is hooked up, going to hook up the ground here in a second. I need to get the little fire extinguisher ready just in case something, you know, catches fire or whatever. Probably hook up my water hose that's right outside the door just in case as well. Uh, I'd rather be more prepared and not need it than something happen and not be prepared to try to at least battle some sort of fire because a lot of people have little fires when they first power up a car. So I'm going to go ahead and do that prep real quick and then I will go ahead hit power and see if we got power to the fuel pump. So we got the battery all hooked up. Went ahead and verified I had 12 volt on my main lug down there. Part of the reason why I'm leaving all the wiring down for right now. So I think really all there is is to put the key into the um, ex run position, I guess you will not start, but run. The Arizona Ice-T coming in clutch. And the last thing I did so I went ahead and unplugged the injector so it's not spraying fuel, it's not pulsing the injectors if it happens to. I think that it might not. I think you gotta put some base stuff in it and then cycle the key again. But uh, whenever I do go to get the pump ready, usually when the pump runs, it primes the system. So I went ahead and unhooked the injectors there. So, moment of truth. See if everything got wired up decent. And if we got anything here. So at minimum, the dash should fire up when I turn the key. Okay, well, we got dash power. Nothing's tweaking out too bad. We got a whole bunch of lights over there on the ECU. So that's a positive. So we'll go ahead and look at this. Uh, perform TPS auto set before startup wizard. So, okay. And then wizard. So we're going to go ahead and run through the setup wizard here. GMLS, yep. Number of cylinders, eight. Yep. Firing order, good. Cubic inches, 293 is what this comes out to be. 293. Idle speed, 
Got like 1100. Because I don't want it to die every time I start it. I'll, I'll, I'll come back and lower it later. Then the cam is right around the 235 range. I'm gonna go ahead and go with the 235 to 260. It's a 24X Gen 3. I'm gonna set my base fuel pressure at 43. It is other injectors. And then hopefully it will give me Semen Deca, they have 60s on here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and set them as Semen Deca 60s, even though they're 80s. Um, in the Holly software, I can end up setting them at 80s. Once I have the USB cable and can get into the computer, I did this on the computer, I set them at 60s, and then I just changed the rating to 80. Power adder type, none. Internal one bar. And then it sets your kind of your little number here. Loads this. I might run the fuel pump right here. Please cycle ignition to complete. Operation complete, finish. So that is the basic setup. Um, we will see what happens here now that I cycle this. It should run the fuel pump right here. Sounds like it. I hear something running. I hear stuff clicking. All the relays and stuff are clicking. So I'm going to check and see if we got any fuel there. Well, it makes total sense that just because it cycled the key for a few seconds, probably didn't have enough time to fill the DAS 8 line all the way up to the intake, injectors, everything, and back to here to return it. So I need to uh, probably cycle it a couple times to get the whole system going but I will have um, April look up here while I cycle the key a few more times so actually this fitting and that fitting weren't tight and tighten this one but I forgot about those it's gonna go ahead and cycle it again I'm sure everything's good here if this is sealed then I should keep pushing fluid through there there we go so now we got fuel coming into this and then we'll come up here and check for leaks on the engine since we know we got fuel through the whole system we got something oh it's probably coming out of there i just saw the other little drip too looks like i got a little bit right here so i'll tighten these up it's pushing out this little guy because i didn't put any tape on it to make sure i sealed that up i didn't know if i'd have to but so i'll go ahead and get tighten that up a little bit more and then tighten this fitting oh i got a little leak out of this one too I'm gonna leak on all these things. The next build, I will probably go ahead and get some cutters. Still though, I know that the line just has crap in it anyway, but gotta try to clean it out a little better than that because some of that I still fed and since passed the injectors. Hopefully it didn't go down in it. That's why I didn't want to pulse the injectors either. Uh, so it's not trying to embed this stuff down into the injector. Hopefully I just flushed it through the line, sent it back and it flushed them out. But that's a wasted E now. I accidentally touched the starter when recycling the key and the starter bumped over but no oil in it so I do know that at least the starter is looking good everything seems to be fairly decent I mean no major issues so knock on the steering wheel I think we're, we're looking pretty good hey everyone back out here no sense in going super late last night also I wanted to wait for Alex to get over here since he's helped so much with the project I want to make sure he's part of starting this thing so we got the a uh, little fuel gauge off of Clyde, went ahead and set the fuel pressure to 43. And now we're gonna get this um, Allen head right down here out of the block so we can use my priming system. So I built this off of probably just looking at Google and stuff. Uh, some people have done this as like a little bead blaster from Harbor Freight. Hook up your air, feed it out, adapt it over to this. And then I made this little adapter out of a stock like sensor unit. Uh, to 6 a.m. So you pressurize this tank, you crack it, feed air in, it pumps oil through here, and it goes right into this oil galley that is right behind the oil pump. So it feeds the oil galley, pushes up in the engine, and then as you're pressurizing that and it's feeding oil in, you turn the engine over by hand a few times just to help circulate the oil into the engine. So we're gonna go ahead and get oil put in, transmission fluid put in, and then we should be able to fire this thing up. 
So you guys should be able to see right there, got it all hooked up, comes up, has a valve there to open it, so you can pressurize it, but usually you can leave that one open, just control it off of this one here with how much pressure it's going in. So when you open this valve, it pressurizes the tank, and then you open that valve, and it'll feed the engine um, with oil. So as you guys can see, it's empty. You might not be able to see it, but I'm just gonna take and fill this thing up with about five quarts of oil. Uh, the oil pan takes seven. I already put one down in the pan. So we'll go ahead and push this one up through the engine. And then hopefully my little air compressor can keep up with this thing. Probably not gonna be able to, but all it does is it just more or less compresses it, pushes it out the bottom into this tube, into the engine. We'll turn it over like I said, and it feeds the engine, primes it up real nice, and then no dry starts. I went ahead and opened it. You can kind of hear the air kind of pushing through the line. This one's open, so it's feeding the engine. And every little bit, every couple minutes. Go ahead and uh, empty this out. Try to catch it right before it goes completely empty. So it's not pushing much air into the system. I'm getting super excited. This is, you know, always when you get close to the end of a build, you get ready to fire, you just, Excited, nervous. Hopefully everything goes right. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna cross our fingers here soon. I was looking at it, and this still has the stock plugs in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw some 474s in it, like what I run in the Camaro, at least to start it. It's a little bit colder plug, and uh, it'll be a good starting point. It might be too cold, but at least I know I have good plugs in it to begin with. All right, everyone. Time has come to try to fire this thing up. So cross our fingers that nothing, no big pops, bangs. Just hopefully we get some fire in the pipes and we'll uh, hear these zoomies come to life. Got our little makeshift uh, puke tank sitting right here. Probably should put a zip tie on the that fitting right there on the steam vent kit. And then uh, last thing to do right here is plug in the injector harness so it can actually feed fuel to the cylinders. Got our fire extinguisher just in case. Safety first. We have one out here. Yeah, yeah right there right on there. the toolbox. Do you think that's what that is? Mm-hmm. Maybe not, maybe it's just a squeeze. Well, sounds like we're close. I can probably go ahead and add back what I didn't have on the... Oh, I know. I didn't even see no... Well, it's got fuel pressure, 30 pounds right there. The gauge is on. Down there, I'll lose all my hair. Smells like yeast. Yep, that's probably why it's not wanting to. Two. I don't know if it's coming out. I couldn't see if it's one of those two though, huh? Yeah, something on that side. Okay. Right here. Easy enough. Well, it fires and runs. Yep, that's half the... <laughs> <laughs> Always got the little things, I guess. It makes a little noise. Sound like a John Deere tractor. <laughs> it's not too, too crazy <laughs> though. No, not too bad right there actually. Better than I thought. Oh, that's tight.
all the way down. Yeah, it's running it from this union right here. Alrighty, so first fire up, pretty crazy. Sounds pretty good, but we have a little leak in the back, a little leak up here. And then also I'm getting no water in the radiator hose, so I don't know why the water pump isn't doing anything, or maybe the well, thermostat the isn't opening. Yeah, hmm? thermostat's probably not opening yet. And it's 202 is where it was at, so oh. should have. 196, it should have yeah, should have opened up. So, I mean, either that or it's right on the verge. If the if the thing's off by a few degrees, maybe it maybe it's not quite there but it should have been should have been right there so uh, maybe check a few things and then maybe fire it up and try to get some fluid through it maybe i don't know what i got to do to try to burp the system but uh figure it out so usually when i fill these up i'll put water in here and it'll fill the block up apparently i didn't get much water in the block so we added a bunch through the hose here pushed it over so now the block should have plenty of water in it so hopefully now it'll start drawing it through also over here so i guess this one in the hole down there's the tranny cooler uh, I'm not too sure what's up with uh, with this. This might be a vent off the vet or whatever, so maybe you don't have to mess with any of these, except for uh, this one has to be tapped because it vents out. So we'll go ahead and fire this thing up again. We got everything figured out, and we're gonna try to fire it and see if uh, it'll stay at temp now. If not, I might have to change up something with the radiator hose, but find it out. Iron the hole. missed a plug wire so we're only running on seven through that whole thing so I'm gonna go ahead and fire it one more time and see how it runs now that is it the thing runs it's pretty crazy it's super loud sitting inside of it letting it idle it just it's gonna be insane doing a burnout in this thing but I cannot wait so if you guys want to see the first burnout, the first drive, the first anything with this truck, other than startup because you just watched it, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.